Welcome back to part two of our look at my AML concentrics, which are fitted to my Firebird. The postman's been and dropped us off some little bits from AML, who were very, very quick, even despite the very difficult trading conditions that everyone's experiencing at the minute, but well done to them. So we've got a couple of fibre washers for the uh, inlet. Excuse me. A couple of fibre washers for the drain plugs. Some O-rings for the mixture and idle. <laughs> mixture and idle. Yeah, mixture and idle screws. I'm going bad. Don't worry about it. A couple of uh, needle valves and a couple of float bowl gaskets. Lovely. So that little lot should be enough to sort the carburetor out, because having checked it all, as we saw in the last video, none of it seems worth the price of replacing any major components. So let's start off with our, uh, our mixture and our throttle screws, which need those little O-rings attached, so I'll cut my way into the bag. I bet these are going to be fun to get on, as they're quite small. One and two. Right. Okay, so let me try not to get in your way while we're doing this. Hopefully, that has rolled into place. They do look quite tight, huh? They are quite tight. I think you're going to need decent fingernails for this job, that's for sure. Well, there's a good start, eh? Right. That's going so well, I'm going to start again. Uh, see, if I lubricate them, I'm not convinced. I'm about to get them over. I'll try lubricating the end of that. Tiny amount of silicon grease. Let's try again. Can't get underneath them, that's the problem. Oh, this is ridiculous. They should just roll down. This is probably counterintuitive, but I'm going to try another way around. If I can get it over from the top, which I can. Oh, look at that. So, there you go. So, right, that's counterintuitive, isn't it? I assumed it would be easier to get it on over there. But I found it difficult. You may find it very easy. Right, there we are. A little bit of lubricant attached to the, not attached, smeared on the head of the uh, screw and it popped on. So there you go. Uh, if you do go over the top like I just did, because as I said, my fingernails don't seem to be up to it. I found it easier to make sure I did it at 90 degrees to the slot, because if you try and roll it that way, the rubber just wants to drop in the slot, which is uh, irritating. Right, hurrah. Right, we're finally getting somewhere. So they can go back in place. Now then, the mixture one was only out half a turn when we took it apart. Now I'm sure they should, I'll check in the manual, but I would have thought it meant to be all that, so I'll gently bottom it. Half. One, and we'll just see what happens. I'll have a look at the manual, but I don't remember seeing a setting, to be honest. And I'll just bring the uh, idle screw so it's just touching inside the uh, inside the throttle body. Right, what a palaver! At least it's on. Right, so we might as well fit our uh, jet stack with our clean valves. Valves, got clean jets. 
just nip that up. And in another jet. That sounded a bit squeaky, didn't it? I don't think I like the sound of that. I think we should give that a little bit of lubrication. Just sounded very dry and horrible. There, sound a bit better. Good. Right. So there's nothing else to go in there, is there? Because it wasn't an, an idle jet. Nope. So we had our float bowl. So we'll put the drain plug in with this new gasket. I will tighten that up fully later. Because I haven't got my large screw slot here, I don't think. Right, so we have our float. Now I didn't go for the uh, stay up float because um, I actually live next to a, not next to, but I'm fairly close to a petrol station which still sells ethanol, currently sells ethanol free super unleaded. Uh, which I believe they intend to continue to sell for some time, but who knows. So I'll try it with this. If it becomes a problem at a later date, it's, uh, it's not a big job to change it over, should it require it. Fairly quick to drop the float ball off and swap the float. So, Anyway, that's my plan. Whether it's a sensible plan or not, I don't really know. Anyway, the float needs this little pin putting back in, which I think I will lubricate again first with a little piece of little bit of grease just to help it. Attention to one job at a time, Mark. That's the uh, that's the correct thing to do, isn't it? So our little needle just pops over there, drops in that hole. That's it. We just have to work out our little gasket position, like so. Now then, float height. Time to consult the manual because I can't remember how these are meant to be. So I'll well, look at the manual. I'll come back in a second. Right, a quick look online, and it's all coming flooding back now because I remember looking at this one before a couple of years ago on a different little project and the horror has come back to me. So I now wish that I bought these stay up floats when I had the opportunity because they have a metal tang which you can adjust the float height with. And sadly because these ones are plastic there's a bush here, I don't know if you can see that very well, I think you can. There's a bush there. And the float height is set by raising and lowering, lowering that bush in relation to your uh, tip. Now, the float height measurement I've got is 2 milli down from the top. So I'm just going to mark the float ball. I'm hoping these are, I'm really, really hoping these are okay. Because uh, the bike has done very low mileage, so they should be very close to how they left the factory. But we shall see. So I need to make a mark two milli down from the flat face and have a look. 
Right, so measured down from the edge, made a small mark on the uh, inside of the float bowl. There does appear to be some sort of grey witness mark around it, which I'm hoping is from the original position. I don't know, we shall find out. So, with that in place, if you press down on there, you Now see that's high to me. It needs to come up, so that seems to be high. Which means our little bush. Let me think. Oh my brain's not working today. So if our bush comes out, that will lower the float level. So our bush has got to come out slightly. So I have to find something suitable to get behind it, warm that up and then tap it down. Ah, oh, this is going to be fun, isn't it? Right, well, we have to give it a go. Right, I've, uh, I've gently warmed around the bush. Tapped it out that way towards the camera. And I went too far. So then I had to warm it back up, tap it back in again, which is a major pain in the you know what anyway I now think if that all mounted correctly and holding that down to make sure it's not applying any you know the float's not loose to lift and then applying just enough pressure to close the valve and no more we are just below that surface near my mark so I'm not going to stress about it. I think that's close enough. It's better than it was, that's for sure. And I think it's close enough. So I'll check the other carb and see if it's the same. But uh, I think that's good enough for me. So let's get back to sticking it all together. Right. There's our float back in. Everything's back in place. I'll do it this way around this time. So hopefully I won't get in your way. There's our two holes, everything lines up. That should go on like that, in theory. Yep. And if I hold it together while I turn it to the camera, we might get somewhere. Or we might get somewhere if I hadn't taken the screwdriver away. Crosshead screwdriver, but I've only got this to hand. So it'll do. Lovely. Right, now I don't have the cables yet, so we'll just proceed as if we had. I'm just going to find something to tighten out first. Right. Found an appropriate large slotted screw. So there we go. So they're tight. That's tight. Just double check. Yep. Yep. Good. Our screw on adapter can be reattached. Doesn't seem to be uh, specific to any particular side. Now then. Our needle can go back in for a minute. We're not actually uh, going to attach it. We know it fits. That can wait for when it goes on the bike. Our top's been cleaned up, our spring's ready to go, as are our screws. And then our choke mechanism. So I'm going to have to show you those when the cables arrive which will be in this video, but along in a short time. Now for attaching the carbs in the uh, gasket set, you get four paper gaskets. But originally, let me get a pass book, I'll show you. No, can't find it, so I'll show you the, uh, the single carb one, which is in the pass book. 
So according to the parts book, you'll have a turn over the page, we've got the actual numbers. You will have a carburetor manifold gasket at number 50. And then at 51 there's an insulating washer, which is, was originally Tufnol, I believe. So I looked for them and I couldn't find them. Which again may be down to me rather than anything else, but I struggled to find them when I was looking. The gasket set, as we've seen, comes with just paper ones. And then I discovered a chap selling a nice modern updated kit with some sort of uh, polymer insulator. So that would replace your Tufnels. Two new uh, upgraded, upgraded O-rings for the carb, which will fit in now. And some insulating washers for the nuts, which I thought was a really good idea. Modern upgrade for the old carbs. So I will be able to assemble it properly with paper gaskets, then the Tufnel, then the carbs, and insulate it. So getting our carb body back out again. Let's see if the O-rings will fit. So there we go, are they going to fit? Yes, beautifully. I've got a gasket set on another build I'm doing um, on a 2CV engine. If you're vaguely interested in 2CV engines, pop over and have a look at that. And uh, exactly the same type of fitting with the O ring and the O ring provided in the gasket set wouldn't seat. I don't know that one's falling out now, uh, but that's okay. It uh, wouldn't seat. It kept rolling back out again, uh, which is really quite irritating. So, that fits beautifully, there's no attempt for it to roll out. So I'll just put a little piece of rubber grease behind it just to hold it in place. Don't need a lot, but just to encourage it to sit there while I'm moving the carb about, I don't want it dropping out at any point. And rubber grease of course is completely safe. Lovely. I won't be using any gasket compound on that anyway because it fits straight onto the Tufnel knuckle, or the new polymer spacer. Right, so that is as far as we can go with the carburetor until our cables arrive, which are on the way. So I will turn you off again and the next time I speak to you, hopefully the cables will be here. The cables have arrived. Hopefully they're right. So we need a carb top, which I've screwed the adjusters right in to give us a maximum amount of time, maximum amount of play, I should say. And then we've got our choke slide with its spring and little metal buffer. And then our main slide, which we're going to assemble. So. I'm slightly nervous about these because they're, they're meant to be the right ones, but they look a bit short to me. They're right by the part numbers. Let me just check. Right, panic over. They are the right ones. They appear to be the right length. Uh, I just thought they looked a little bit shorter in the packet. Right, there we go. That's your choke. Right. Let's see if I can actually remember how these are meant to go together. So that's got to be the choke. Right, so choke cable goes in there. And then our little top hatted metal cap. Should sit in there, it does. That's good. And then a spring. And then our actual slide. So if we pull the spring back, that should go through there like that. Down there like that, hook in. Good, right, that seems to be okay. 
and that fits into our slide. So we need a throttle cable, which we have. So that should go through the centre like that. Yep, yeah, that should be right. And then, yeah, then we need to spring. This is awkward to do and show you at the same time. Need the spring compressed. Oh, you little tinker, come on. And then that's got to sit inside the slide, going through the big hole. Oh, come on. Right, through the hole. And trapped. So that's in. And then we need our slide trap by the spring as well. The cutout fits into the slide. When you look down inside the slide you can see it quite clearly. So we need to compress that spring yet again. And drop that down into place. Like so, and then the spring traps in. Lovely. Right, so choke slide into its section, and then all of that should slide into the body of the card. Needle three in this. Position. One second. As soon as I picked it upright, as opposed to trying to do it on the side so you can see it all happening, it wheeled in quite freely. The slides are very good fit on these carbs, they're not worn at all. So it's fairly tight going in. So it's in. That's all that matters. So then we have to. Uh, Put our little screws in for the top. Now all the adjusters are backed off to make fitting everything easier to the handlebars and junction boxes and all the rest of it. And they will remain that way till it's on the bike and it's sorted out. Just check the slide opens, it does, and it returns. So we'll just nip our tops down. Lovely. So the tickler is on the left, so that's our left hand carb. We need our O-ring. Give it a little bit of a rubber grease like we did in the earlier video, because this is the other carb. Make sure it sits properly in its little recess, which it does. Lovely. Right. So that's the left hand carb done. I'll now do the right hand carb. I won't show you that because it's exactly the same thing again. And then uh, we'll come back and see what the light fit on the bike. Left hand carb is in position because uh, again they're both the same so I'll just show you this one. So we've got paper gas gear which has been greased lightly and then our new flexible toughener replacement. Now, it's hard to toughen a parts book whether it should have another paper gasket or not. I'm going with not at the minute. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going with not at the minute. I can always change it if I'm wrong, but it looks like there's only one according to the parts book. So our carb goes on, but as we know, the nuts won't fit on properly. You've got to start them with the carb off and then work your way down or else they jam. 
So I'll just go and clean the nuts and we'll come back and fit them. And then we have our new plastic insulating washers. I'm going to have to go in front of you, I'm sorry. This is a problem with uh, having to film in awkward spots. Try and get these nuts started. Slightly awkward design really. Right, I think that's how started. <coughs> I'll bring you back when I tighten these up because I won't watch me screw a few bolts down, nuts down. Right, it's on. So now we have to sort out our cable runs, uh, which is going to be fun because I can't remember how they went. And then we need to go back to the bench to look at how the junction boxes and the chunk cables line up. Right. Cables are on. The throttle cables are on anyway. And of course, what I hadn't realised was building them up on the uh, bench is that in order to get them on at the throttle end, it's easier with the tops off. So I'd take the tops back off again to get them in here. But anyway, they're in now. That's all that matters. The routing is not yet perfect, but I need to sort out where all the wiring is going first. So they're just tied out of the way for the minute. But they work. The slides are synchronised using a drill bit just to get them roughly in the right place. They'll obviously need uh, proper setting up when the bike's running, but that's an initial setting. So now we need to move on to the choke mechanism, which we'll have a quick look at on the bench. Right, so there's two cables from each, well one cable from each carb comes up to this box in which there is a splitting section. So you've got two on one side, one on the other. The one on the other goes to the uh, handlebar mounted lever which just bolts on and then into that lever fits uh, another cable. So I will lightly assemble this and then we'll go back to the bike. The connector block for the chokes was another right royal pain. Again more down to my ignorance than anything else because once again I had to re remove the cables from the choke slides in order to get all this to assemble which is a major pain. So all three cables here had to be loose at the respective ends to fit in there and then be reconnected to the carbs and into the choke. Now I've moved the choke. I've moved the choke onto the left bar. It was on the right bar originally. I don't know if that is correct. I'll have to look. Uh, but I just prefer it on that side. I don't know why. I also think it'd be easier to do without interfering with the throttle hand. I may be proved wrong. It's also slightly better in this case because this cable is about that much longer than the original one, which would have made routing it that way around to bring it up here slightly more awkward. But anyway, I'll give it a go, see how it goes. I don't know. I shall have to find out if I can live with it. But there we go, all new cables. Everything seems to be working. The choke seems to be working back to front for my liking, but anyway, that's more to do with my ignorance than anything else, I'm sure. So there we are, carbs are fitted. Hopefully, the job is a good one. Right, I've cleaned up the link pipe and its uh, metal work. I've decided to, uh, oh, I missed a bit. I decided to retain the filters, as I said, because I've had a discoloured and Perfectly usable condition, not damaged in any way. I've had a right good look inside here. It's a clear. I've had cleaning fluid through it, blown it out. And there is no sign of any deterioration as far as cracking or anything like that goes in the pipe. So I'm going to leave it and try it. If it causes a problem, I'll change it. I don't think it will. It may. Who knows? I don't know. But I've decided just to leave it. I like the look of it. 
in fact I might try and get proper period looking petrol pipe to supply it as well if I can just because I don't know it seems to fit the look so there you go our filter goes in there a new washer goes on there that goes in there so that's all the new bits fitted now there's probably people hopefully people will be watching this who knows but for those three people who are actually watching it um, you're probably thinking well you got away really like there and I have the total cost of the parts the new parts was £25 including delivery I think fingers crossed that the carbs will function perfectly well now now you you can buy brand new carbs off AML, either as original type or a more modern upgraded type, which is stronger, made from better material. I think the basic ones are about 120 quid and the upgraded ones are probably about 40 or 50 quid more than that. I don't know, I didn't check the price to be honest, because I didn't think I was going to need them. But if we assume we bought the cheap ones, cheaper ones, you're probably looking at 250 quid the pair, aren't you? Something like that. And I think these will function perfectly adequately for a total out there £25. So I'm a happy bunny, as you can imagine. Although the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So you're going to have to wait till much later in the Firebird build to see if they actually work. But I can't think of any reason why not.